Can Ein Sama keep his role as overlord over the light novel top 10? Well, we're about to find out. Hello everybody and welcome to the weekly countdown of the top 10 best-selling light novels in Japan. This covering April 30th to May 6th of 2018. Kind of a weird list this week. I have to be really honest. Uh, some titles that had left the list coming back to the list. Some pretty low sales numbers considering this is the top 10 best-selling light novels. And uh, yeah, it's just kind of a weird list this week. Uh, not, I mean, there's, I think there's six titles replacing titles from last week, but it's, it's just, yeah, it's just kind of a strange list this week. But, uh, ah, with all that said, let's get into it, and, uh, then you can let me know what you think after the video's over. At number 10, with 4,711 copies sold, volume number one of Sword Art Online Alternative Gun Gale Online. Like I said, kind of weird, right? So this one was on the list, I think, two weeks ago, obviously getting a boost from the anime, and now it's filtered back onto the list. But, I mean, only 4,711 copies sold, so you already kind of know what the list is like this week when number 10 is only in the 4,000s. I mean, we've seen other weeks where number 10 is seven, eight, nine thousand 9,000 sold, so it seems like it's kind of a slow week this week. Do I really need to tell you what this is all about? About a girl who's super tall and decides to play Gun Gale Online because she can play as a super cute chibi character? I don't know about the setup on this one. In any case, this one is licensed for English. It is being released in June, the first volume. Uh, it's interesting to see the online community reacting to this show. It, it, it seems like it's popular, and I see all of these articles asking... Is Gun Gale better than Sword Art Online and stuff like that? And I don't know, because I haven't really watched it, because I'm trying not to spoil the light novel, but uh, I'll at least let you know what I think about the light novel when it comes out. At number 9, with 6,149 copies sold, volume number 3 of Potion Danomi de Ikinobimasu, aka I Shall Survive Using Potions. Uh, this one has no English license for either the light novel or the manga spin-off. Karu Nagase was caught up in a mysterious phenomenon and died re when returning home from work. It was because of a time-space distortion that a higher life form was cleaning up, but she was able to receive a younger body and the ability to create any potion she wanted in another world. Karu who's now a rather sharp-eyed 15-year-old girl again, will work hard for a peaceful life in another world. Uh, as a commoner, though, she doesn't understand the thinking of nobles. She's now stuck in a delusional story that she's trying to escape from. Hey, this is different from what you told me, goddess. So I'm not too sure what the setup of this one is. When I'm reading this description, it makes it kind of sound like she thought that the world was one thing and that her whole potion ability would accomplish this. And uh, things apparently haven't turned out the way that she expected. I don't know if it's a comedy or if it's a little bit more serious than that. If you have any ideas, let me know in the comments down below. At number 8, with 6,325 copies sold, volume number 2 of Sentoin Hakanshimasu a.k.a. Combatants Will Be Dispatched. Uh, this one's notable because it's by the same author as Konosuba, which kind of makes you think, like, obviously an author's fame or having a really famous property does not necessarily mean that everyone's going to go crazy and buy your book. You know? Because I'm looking at 6,325 copies sold, and that is nothing compared to what a volume of Konosuba does. So... Eh, it's just kind of an interesting note. I, I mean, I don't know a whole lot about book buying culture in Japan or, you know, so forth. It just seems in North America, you have a lot of authors that have huge name recognition, even if they only do one series that they're really popular for. They will have huge sales and tons of publication, like marketing and everything else behind any new series that they do. But in Japan, it doesn't necessarily seem like that's true. 
Uh, admittedly, Reki Kawahara, most of his series seem to sell well, at least Excel World and Sorter, but I kind of wonder if those it's because those series came out close together and both kind of were notable at the time. I'm not too sure, but uh, also it's because, I think also part of it is just because this one, unlike Konosuba, doesn't have a popular anime attached to it. A grunt of an evil organization was ordered by his boss. Combatant number six. You are to be dispatched out to another planet via a teleportation device in order to find a habitable world that can save mankind from the brink of overpopulation. If you succeed, you'll earn a high rank among us. Ironically, weren't they supposed to be the evil ones here? Nah, I want to raise. After a few thrashings and threats, accompanied by a clingy, lolly android with an obsession for self-destruction, they ended up on a planet with magic and a transforming magical knight? Let's begin the invasion of this fantasy world. Evil laugh. <laughs> um, I, you know what? This one sounds kind of cool. I, I gotta be honest. I, I think it sounds fun. I'd check it out. <laughs> At number seven with 6,578 copies sold, volume number three of Satsuriku no Tenshi, aka Angels of Death. Now this is kind of interesting. This is actually a manga series originally, which is being released in English by Yen Press. They're releasing the third volume June 5th. 5th. And uh, there has recently been an anime. It's uh, announced it's set to air in July. Uh, now this, I guess, is just purely a novelization of the manga. Uh, 13-year-old Rachel awakens to find herself trapped in the basement of an abandoned building. Without any memories or even a clue as to where she could be, she wanders the building, lost and dizzy. In her search, she comes across a man covered in bandages. He introduces himself as Zack, and he wields a grim reaper-like sickle. A strange bond is struck between them, strengthened by strange, crazy promises. These two, trapped in this strange building, don't know why fate has placed them there, but they will work together desperately to find a way out. I have not read the manga, and actually, I will just say, I kind of thought this was interesting. The manga seems to be fairly well received by Japanese audiences if you just go by rankings on Amazon. The light novel, though, is like maybe two, two and a half stars for each volume so far on Amazon in Amazon.jp. I thought that was kind of interesting that it seems like the manga is popular, but the light novels are getting pretty trashed. I'm wondering if it's just mostly light novel, like uh, manga fans kind of berating the light novel and that the novel itself is making sales off of people who aren't fans of the manga? I don't know. Uh, unfortunately, I can't read the language, so I can't even read what the comments are by people, but uh, it just I thought it was just kind of interesting is all. At number six, with 7,057 copies sold, volume number five of Yoheiden no Ryoriban, aka Cook of the Mercenary Corp. I like cooking. But when I was coming back from shopping, I got lost, and ended up being the cook of a mercenary unit. I don't know why this happened, but in order to survive, I will make delicious meals. This is the story of the heroic unit which became a legend in the future, and the amazing cook who continued to support them. Now, there are no English licenses for this series. Um... This one, I'm not too sure, like, is this an isekai, or is this like he gets kidnapped? What exactly is the mercenary corporation? Like, I'm just kind of wondering what the world setup of this one is. It just it makes me kind of curious, just because to me, mercenary doesn't necessarily denote heroic or, or positive. And yet, you know, this says, oh, they'll become a legend in the future. So I'm just, I'm curious about this one. I, I'm, I'm kind of wondering just what the actual setup of this is. Uh, let me know if you're familiar with this title in the comments down below. At number five, with 7,381 copies sold, the series that will just not let go of the top 10, volume 25 of Mahoka Koko no Retose, the irregular at Magic High School. Uh, I don't really have anything else to say. It's available in English. The books, the light novels, the manga, the anime. Go watch it. Go read it. You can do that. And I'm pretty much done, because I think I've talked about this series a whole lot. 
because I think there's been one title 24 or 25 on this list for like the past seven or eight weeks. So there you go. And number four, with 7,393 copies sold, volume eight of Ari Ferretta Shokugyo no De Sakai Saikyo. Ari Ferretta from Commonplace to World's Strongest. This one, of course, on the list last week. This is licensed for English release by J Novel Club, uh, volume six coming out May 26th. And also this is getting a print release from Seven Seas. Uh, they're releasing volume to May 15th. So there you go. Uh, Seven Seas is also going to be releasing the manga. I don't know, have they released any of it yet? I don't think they have. I should have looked that up, but uh, anyway. Uh, and of course there is an anime announced for release in 2019. I talked a little bit about that last week, about how it was delayed from this year and that the key pick that they've now shown, I kind of think UA looks way cuter in some... Kind of glad they delayed it, so there you go. At number three, with 12,394 copies sold, Naruto Shinden. Now, this one, of course, is based on the Naruto series. Uh, the manga is licensed for English release by Viz. Uh, now, Viz has also previously released uh, Naruto light novels, so... It's entirely possible that we're going to get this one eventually in English. Uh, of course, you can stream the whole anime, the Naruto plus the Boruto uh, anime on Crunchyroll. Uh, Naruto Shinden, literally meaning Naruto New. Uh, apparently, according to the Naruto Wiki, it's a light novel series which will be released from May to July and is part of commemorating the 25th anniversary of Shueisha Jump J-Books. The uh, series consists of three installments. There's Naruto Shinden, Sasuke Shinden, and Shikamaru Shinden, focusing on Naruto and his companions uh, and their role as parents. So this first one, uh, which is releasing, it deals with Naruto Uzumaki's relationship with his daughter, Himawari. So there you go. That's what's going on with this. So it's another light novel sort of spin-off. It looks like uh, it's not really an adaptation of any existing Naruto stories. It uh, looks like they're sort of standalone, complementary volumes, but set during the time period of Boruto, which makes sense, seeing as how sort of that's the current anime. And again, like I said, it's very possible we'll get these in English because Viz has licensed and published other Naruto light novel series in the past. At number two, with 17,241 copies sold, Meitante Conan, Zero no Shikonin. Uh, Detective Conan, Zero the Enforcer. This one's been on the list for quite a while. Like, man, this series just has got some crazy legs, especially considering that this is just a novelization of the latest Detective Conan film. It's not even like this is some brand new standalone Detective Conan thing. Uh, this one, we do have the manga being put out by Viz. Uh, I should, you know, I should have looked more into it, but I keep thinking to myself, eh, it's a novelization of a movie. It won't be on the list for much longer. And, and yet now it's worked its way all the way back up to number two. Again, I'm not too sure on what the situation is, but I have seen that Funimation has supposedly lost the license to Case Closed or Detective Conan. So I don't know what's happening in terms of the anime in North America, but, uh, well, I guess we'll see. Finally, at number one, with a very commanding 43,076 copies sold, are any of you really surprised? Volume 13 of Overlord. <laughs> I think I pretty much said everything I need to say about this series last week. It is a great series. We do have it in English, the light novels being done by Yen On. Uh, volume 7 coming out this month which I'm looking very forward to reading. Um, and we also do have the manga via Yen Press, and the anime is available to stream on Crunchyroll, and there's a third season of anime being starting in July. So, lots of Overlord, which is fantastic. Now, some of you did point out, uh, I said last week that apparently this was the last Overlord book until 2019, which is what I had read, but... Uh, apparently some of you are saying that there is sort of a side story book that's going to be released by the author sometime between uh, 13 and 14's release next year. So supposedly there is a little bit of Overlord in there somewhere. And some of you have also pointed out that the author apparently does this as like a side gig, like just part time, which is pretty stunning to me considering that uh, 
Well, just based on the sales numbers, uh, he's, he's doing some pretty good bank with this series. That's well, just my take on it. But in any case, nonetheless, uh, it does sound like there will at least be a little bit of Overlord between now and 2019, which is cool because it's a fantastic series. But again, it, it's fine because we're only at Volume 7 in English, so we still got ways to go before it's a problem for us anyway. This week, I want to say a special thanks to Yuki Ali, Mitchell Von Regen, Bob Thompson, and Kwang Duong Gayan, and all the rest of my supporters on Patreon. If you checked it out, this past week, the first episode of the Light Novel Podcast went live, actually just a couple of days ago, and so far it has been so positively received, and we've gotten some amazing feedback from a good number of you, and it's just fantastic. It feels great, and uh, we're already working, and uh, hopefully we'll have episode two recorded this week, so we keep up with that two-week release schedule. So again, thank you all so much for helping to make that possible, and for your support and your enthusiasm around the project, because uh, it, it looks like one that definitely we are going to work very hard to keep around for a long time coming, and to make ever so much better as we go along. So those are your best-selling light novels for the week of April 30th to the May 6th of 2018 in Japan. Uh, well, I guess we'll see what happens next week. Hopefully the list will be a bit more exciting. Like I said, I didn't feel like the list this week. When I was looking at the titles, I was kind of like, mm. As soon as I saw that Detective Conan was number two, I was kind of like, mm. Then I saw Gun Gale was back in the list, and I thought, mm. So hopefully next week we get a whole whack ton of new titles that are exciting and cool and... Maybe somebody who can actually give Ein Sama a run for his money and uh, some competition, but, uh, well, we'll see that next week. So if you're brand new to the channel and you love light novels, you should subscribe. I do this list every single week, as well as doing two to three light novel reviews on a weekly basis as well. Thank you so much for joining me in this video. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Till then, bye-bye for now.